The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Morning, everyone. Um, thank you very much for joining. Uh, so today's presentation is on the uh, new InfraTrend CS product uh, in partnership with Toshiba as well. Uh, so on the call today, there'll be a, a few speakers. It'll be myself. Um, so my name is Stefan Ferrari. I'm one of our solutions architects here at CMS. Um, I work on our storage and, and server uh, end of the business. I've also got Kelly Locke. Um, she's from InfraTrend. Jeff Briggs and Rainer Case as well, uh, who are from Toshiba. Um, Jeff, do you want to introduce yourself quickly? Yes, certainly. Hopefully you can uh, hear me clearly and my mic's on mute. Uh, so, yeah, good morning. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining the first Toshiba and InfoTrend uh, webinar. Um, as Stefan just mentioned, my name is uh, Jeff Briggs and I'm the sales manager uh, here at Toshiba, responsible for the enterprise HDD products. Uh, we're really pleased that you're able to attend, so thanks for making the time today. Uh, as uh, Stefan mentioned this morning, we're going to give you a bit of a, a brief overview on Toshiba's, uh, sorry, on InfoTrend's new uh, CS product um, and how Toshiba and InfoTrend have come together uh, to offer our customers and our partners uh, really quite a fantastic solution. Um, from a Toshiba perspective, uh, you know, Toshiba has come a long way in the past uh, 18 months to two years, especially around our enterprise class uh, HDD product range. And my colleague today, Reiner, is going to go through a couple of slides to show you the direction on how our enterprise drives are really in a position to be leading the, the market uh, uh, when it comes to this technology. Uh, so, yeah, just, uh, just a brief introduction and to say hello to you all. Thanks very much. Cheers, uh, Jeff. Okay, so to kick off today, just so you guys uh, can see where we're going. Um, so the first thing is just the agenda quickly. So we're going to be looking at the uh, industry trends for scale out NAS. Brief introduction into the Eon Store product. You know what it is, uh, where it sits in the market, some highlights, advantages. Uh, then we'll look at those Toshiba drives, uh, and then lastly we're going to finish off uh, with Kelly going to be talking about the uh, new Champion Partner Program that InfoTrend will be launching. So the scale out industry. So it's a, a huge talking point at the moment, scale out. Um, the reason is because applications globally are needing more and more storage, um, specifically in, in, a, in one big pool of data. Uh, so things like the rise of AI, um, for example, if you've got autonomous vehicles, um, they will generate between 25 and 30 terabytes per car per day. Uh, that data all needs to be stored and analyzed. Um, there's lots of other industries that are the same, but that's one of the reasons why there's the growth there. So um, estimated 2022, the industry will be worth around 32 billion. And there's lots and lots of investment from storage companies uh, into this technology. Uh, also the rise of things like erasure coding, uh, all this technology is growing massively. So it's a very exciting um, storage product, um, growth rate of around 21%. So it's actually uh, a really good time to be involved in this and, and getting on board now, especially for those customers that are interested in large scale storage. So let's give a brief introduction to the InfraTrend. So the Eon Store CS is a new product from InfraTrend. It is a scale out uh, network attached storage. So a NAS, a scale out NAS. Um, the advantage of this kind of technology is that you can scale uh, linearly, which means that you can increase your capacity while also increasing your uh, storage capability, so your capacity and your uh, performance uh, scale at the same time. You also have a single namespace, so it all acts as one big uh, device, which means easier management. You're also not having to manage lots and lots of different types of, of storage or managing three or four different uh, companies worth of, uh, of devices, so you're lowering your costs from a management standpoint as well. Looking at the highlights, there is some more information on these as we go, so I'll touch on some of them briefly. The first one's high performance and capacity, um, so the ability to scale massively up and out on this product is very helpful. I'll go into more detail on that. Um, same with this side, this bit here, so we will talk more about how it scales uh, out and up. You're also able to have different types of storage, so you can have flash, you can have spinning disk, all within one usable area, uh, which makes it very resilient for, for different use cases. Um, data protection, I will go into more detail on that because it's quite an important component to the system. High security, so the security aspect with InfraTrend has been very well thought out with this product. So not only do they have um, self-encrypting drives, which are good for GDPR compliance, which uh, we all know is, is very important for customers at the moment. Um, GDPR requires encryption at rest, um, and SED drives mean that, that they're compliant with that. 
Um, another feature they've got in here is Worm, which is write once, read many. Uh, that's really important um, when it comes to things like uh, uh, CCTV, for example, you have to prove that footage hasn't been um, edited or changed. So Worm will guarantee that that file has been written once and then never been changed. So that's, that's a really good feature. So CCTV is, is one of the main applications of this kind of product. So it's a, a great thing they put that in there. And then it's also very easy to manage. And again, I'll touch on that in a moment. So first, scalability. So scale out uh, does what it says. You add more nodes, you get more capacity, you get more performance. One of the unique things that InfraTrend have done is they've also included the ability to scale up. Now, the good thing here is you don't always need more performance. You may have a customer that the performance of three nodes is absolutely fine for them, uh, and all they need is some extra space. So instead of having to fork out for the cost of a new head unit, because obviously you've got CPU, you know, RAM in there, motherboard, those all cost more money. Um, so instead of doing that, they can scale up. So each node can have up to 120 hard drives, um, and you can have up to 144 nodes. Now, some of you probably got considerably better math skills than myself, so you can calculate uh, roughly what it is there, but we're talking in the, the hundreds of petabyte region um, that this system is able to expand to. So it's very, very expandable, and it's also flexible on cost at the same time, thanks to that scale up capability. So migration, now not everyone has data that sits uh, on the right bit of storage, so sometimes you need all flash and sometimes you need uh, hard drives. So if you're running this system, let's say in a virtual environment, um, you may need your high performance virtual machines to be sat on all flash storage. And what Evertrend have done is allowed you to, uh, the customer to migrate very easily between different types of storage. Uh, and this doesn't have any impact on the performance or redundancy in the system while you're migrating that information from one different type of disk to another. Um, that's very easy to do and you can manage it just from the user interface. You can just simply click and move. So if it was a VMware environment, for example, you would just move one file from one type of storage to the other, just clicking on it in the user interface. From a data protection standpoint, um, you have three levels with the Infratrim product. So firstly, they give you RAID protection, which is failure against hard drives. In some uh, scale out products, a failure of a hard drive can mean that you actually kind of lose the node for that period of time. Uh, so you have to rebuild a whole node instead of just one disk. So Infratrend have, have put RAID per node as well. So you've got RAID 5 protection uh, on each individual device. You've got node protection as well, thanks to erase coding or replica, which we'll go into in a second. So you can lose uh, one node or two nodes, depending on, on which type of setup you've got and continue running. And lastly, you've also got cluster protection. So and this is one of the advantages with erasure coding. You can spread data around across multiple sites um, and, and it doesn't really matter where data comes from. So you can have remote failover as well. So if you've got um, different uh, systems in different countries or different buildings, you can still have data protection and failover between those sites as well. So talking about the, the different types. So there are three kinds uh, of modes that the InfraTrend can run in. The first one is Replica. Uh, Repl Replica has been around for quite a while um, in the scale out market. It's, it's also used quite a lot in um, hyper-converged environments. And the way Replica works is you have two or three copies of the data going to two or three different devices. The advantage there is it's very redundant, uh, very, very, uh, you can make sure if you lose a whole node, the, the copy of the data is done elsewhere. You don't need to rebuild it or do anything like that. You just add a new node back in once it's done. The downside to Replica, of course, is that you are losing um, an entire node's worth of capacity. So if you've got three nodes, you get the capacity of two. Erasure coding um, is, a, is a relatively new technology, um, but it's being used quite a lot now across, across different companies. Uh, the advantage of the erasure coding is that it's much more space efficient than Replica. So instead of losing an entire node, um, you only lose like 20, 30% of your, of your capacity. Um, and that's because of what it, gets data, it chops it up and it distributes it around through the systems and it then calculates parity. So it uses simple math. So for example, if one plus two equals three and it loses the two, it has the beginning and it has the end, the one and the three, and it can figure out that it's a two that's missing. Um, so it's kind of like RAID um, distributed across different systems, that's all. And lastly is distributed mode. So distributed mode is a proprietary thing from InfraTrend. Um, and what this is, is just basically grunt performance. It's, it's similar to something like RAID 0. So you have no protection against failure of nodes, but what you get is the full CPU, uh, you know, grunt force and compute from each node. So this, is, this would be great in things like uh, rendering, for example, uh, or, or in AI when you're uh, wanting to run the algorithms and you just want the, the best possible performance. This is, this is perfect for that. 
So on that note, let's look at some target applications. So the media and entertainment is a, is a major player in this market. You know, if, you, if you're thinking you're watching an 8K film, that 8K film has been shot in 16K. You've then got multiple workstations that need to connect to it. So this is a perfect example of requiring not just high capacity, but also high performance. Um, so media and entertainment is a massive user of this. People like, you know, Disney and, and all those kind of guys will all use this kind of uh, storage environment uh, to connect into their compute farms. Leading on from that is obviously high performance computing. Um, so AI, I mentioned at the beginning um, around autonomous vehicles, um, this is a huge growth market. If you're training an AI to do something like image recognition, you, you need hundreds of petabytes of data to be able to train um, the AI to be able to make mistakes and, and get the largest possible data set you can. Um, in actual fact, the larger the data set, the better the outcome from that AI at the end. So it's really important to have a very large environment. And again, you also need to have a very high level of performance on that, including not just um, throughput, but also IOPS. Surveillance, if you've got large environments like your... Uh, you know, your, your um, schools, colleges, uh, shopping centers, airports, those kind of things, they all require very large uh, storage environments. They're also receiving data from, from hundreds or sometimes even thousands of cameras, which also requires high performance as well as just the capacity. And then back up an archive lastly. So all of those things have to be backed up somewhere. Uh, lots of compliance now requires people to store data for a very long time and also be accessible very quickly. Spinning disk is, is fast coming up on uh, the cost per terabyte of things like I, um, uh, tape drives obviously it's still a bit of a gap but that one two three uh, many people are having their secondary data sat on spinning media now management so the infra trend is easily manageable from a single ui um, you don't have to log into multiple devices you have one pane of glass to manage the entire cluster um, this is really helpful especially when you're looking at the competition lots of these scale out environments require almost a phd to use them or they they require some form of command line interface um, the infra trend doesn't need that at all um, it's it's very very easy to use also the design is, is flexible and modular and um, so you're able to upgrade or change so the system is able to take anything up to 100 gig networking um, which you can swap and change you can start at 10 gig you can move over to different types as you go the other advantage to the modular component is is easy replacement um, so instead of having to replace an entire node if something fails you could just replace a component which ties in very nicely with InfraTrend's on-site services so you can do up to four hour on-site response times uh, depending on where you are uh, for these devices that's mostly across the entire of the UK there's only some places in Ireland this, this, that isn't available um, so that, that's also very easy to manage from that side as well looking at quickly one of the competitors so EMC is probably the the kind of most well known the Isilon product in, in this market like I said there are lots of players especially in the software defined world uh, who, are, who are bringing out products in this space. But you can see here the, the clear difference is, is that ability to scale up as well as out uh, for the InfraTrend. Dell do not offer that feature. And also at the bottom, you can see the performance. The InfraTrend is, is doing very well on performance using its distributed mode. Uh, obviously, different modes will have different capacity, sorry, different performance. Um, but this is still very impressive when you're comparing it to the Isilon, which is a very, very expensive product indeed. So this is an example of a, a real world use case for InfraTrend. Um, so this was a TV station. Now, uh, this kind of environment where you've got multiple um, workstations doing different workloads, this is, this is kind of an example of where you would see storage really struggling and a scale out environment is ideal. Um, so what this customer required was two and a half gigabytes per second of throughput, and that's going to over a hundred client workstations. Um, so what the solution was from InfraTrend was to use their uh, CS3024, which is a 24 base system uh, with three nodes and 72 hard drives in that environment. They had it in an EC2 plus one environment, which is uh, erasure coding two plus one, which means you can uh, lose a node and continue running uh, and also RAID 5 on the individual node itself. Uh, it had 10 gig networking and overall it achieved 2.9 gig per second. Now, the, the important thing here is that this is actually kind of like your perfect example of an entry level starter kit. You're starting on 10 gig, which as we all know, 25 gig, 100 gig uh, are the next levels up from here. On top of that, this is only using a three node cluster. 
And so this is now very easy as that business grows to linearly increase that performance. That's by adding nodes, by changing their networking, and the flexible design from the InfoTrend means that you can swap those network cards or add new cards in to change over to using 100 gig or 25 gig networking as you go. And all you have to do is change the switching and maybe add another node or two if you want. So this is a very flexible system this customer's purchased and they've started at the base level and it's already exceeded their expectations. And quickly, just going to hand over to Reino, who's going to take you through uh, some of the more technical information around the actual hard drives that were used uh, in this environment. Uh, good morning. Thank you, Stefan. This is Rainer from Toshiba. Um, I would like to introduce the base storage component for that CS system, um, which are the hard drives. Um, they are coming from Toshiba. And what we are recommended, what we are using for such um, scale out systems like the, like the InfoTrend CS is the enterprise capacity, sometimes called nearline SAS hard disk drives. So we offer these drives in a capacity point from two to 16 terabyte, um, meaning that um, if you need a lot of storage, um, you can use up to 16 terabyte. And um, later this year, we will also have 18 and next year 20 terabyte. Um, that gives the highest capacity. If your capacity requirements are not so high, but you need more spindles because you need also more performance, you can also use 14, 12, 10, 8 terabytes, um, and for smaller systems, even down to 2 terabytes. Um, they are, they're all available. They're all manufactured. Um, we also recommend to use SAS nearline drives. Um, they are also SATA nearline drives, and from quality point of view, from performance point of view, there are more or less the same also from cost point of view. However, the SATA is only a one channel interface um, while the SAS has two channels. Um, so that means um, failures of systems like a cable breaking and so on does not harm a SAS infrastructure. You can continue to work while if it was a SATA, uh, the device have to go into rebuild. Um, for such kind of active uh, storage systems, the SAS interface is definitely better. Um, it has the 12 gig compared to the SATA, which is only six gig. Um, for the spindle performance, this um, that doesn't make any difference. But if there is any interaction with the drive's cache, the 12 gig interface of um, obviously is, is faster. All these drives run at 7,200 RPM. So the typical nearline uh, drives, they have rotation vibration sensors uh, for the compensating the rotations in larger chassis like the 24 and the, the 60 bay. Of course, they are um, designed for a continuous 24 seven operation with a high workload per year. Um, the quality and reliability is very high. So the MTTF is 2.5 million hours, which um, means there is an annual failure rate which is as down as 0 0.35 percent like if you have thousand drives running um, you have only to uh, expect for uh, kind of less than four failures per year coming with a five years warranty um, a little bit more about the lineup stefan can you switch next slide please so this is our current lineup um, Actually, up to 10 terabyte, um, we offer drives filled with air. Um, from 12 to 16 terabytes, drives are now filled with helium because we have to stack more platters. The platters need to be thinner, um, and the platter, thin platters in air would flatter around because air is a kind of inhomogeneous turbulent gas. So what we did is we changed it to helium with a ceiling, uh, which has also the nice advantage um, that the helium with the lighter gas, there's less friction and the power consumption. Um, as you can see on the uh, right side, the power consumption of the helium drives has been dropping to eight watt while it was uh, between um, nine and 12 watt for the air drives. Um, so all capacity points, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 to 16 are available. As I said, this year, we will offer 18, next year, 20 as well. Um, the buffer size has been scaled um, matching the capacity. Um, they all come with the 12 gig SAS interface. Um, and the data rate of the single drive was, was also increased from the two terabyte um, up to the 16 terabyte. Um, not that large increase, for example, compared to SSDs but as the 
density of the data is growing, so more bits per um, track, um, and the drive is spinning with the same speed, we were also able to increase um, the data rate from 215 to 275. All these near-line SAS drives um, from 6 to 16 terabyte come with 2.5 million hours of MTTF, so very reliable. Um, the 2 and 4 are still from the older generation, um, where the uh, reliability is high, but not that high. However, in field applications, um, we can see that uh, kind of all our drives keep the reliability specification, if not even exceed by a factor of two. So, in short words, uh, three and a half inch cap enterprise capacity or nearline SAS drives are ideal for um, scale out applications like the Infotrend CS. I see. Um, that's all from the hard drive side. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ryan. So, just to give you guys a real world um, example as well, so you can see this is the performance tests that Infotrend had. So this is the uh, the same environment we saw before. So this is three three nodes in exactly the same configuration as that case study. Um, so in the 4K random read write mix, um, over 7,000 IOPS, which for for spinning drives is is very impressive. Um, so this is very good performance. Then at the bottom, you can see the throughput on the uh, one meg sequential read and writes as well, which is you know, nearly five uh, gigabytes per second on the reads uh, and three and a half on the writes. That's that's a, a very impressive performance figure uh, for only three nodes. So again, the more nodes you add, the bigger this number gets. Also, bear in mind there is a flash option as well. So I'm now going to hand over to Kelly. Um, she's going to take you through the uh, Champion Partner Program. Hi guys, you can hear me, yes? Yeah? Yes, there we go. Okay, great. So uh, guys, thank you very much. I just want to take you uh, through the Champion Partner Program from an Infrared point of view. So what we've done is we've looked at ways that we can try and help the market and, and resellers um, to not only sell our product, but also to, to support you while well doing it. So um, we started to launch this at the start of this year, um, and it's basically around looking at opportunities, um, requirements, and outcomes within you know, the business world, and, and what that means for, for our resellers. So we want to reward um, our outstanding resellers and those of you who are out there selling it on a daily, uh, daily, daily basis, which will lead to great exposure, not only for Infotrain, but uh, but also for, for for you guys. And if anybody's interested in this, uh, following my presentation, I would say to please do get in touch directly and we can uh, we can talk about it. So uh, the opportunity is for you to uh, obviously become a, a preferred partner with us, uh, which means greater exposure and uh, regular sales training, for your staff and, uh, and, and for the business. Um, and the way we've done this is by asking you to register deals as and when they come to market um, so that we can have visibility of this, but also we can support you and the distributor through the whole process of, of closing a deal. Could you go to the next um, slide, Stefan? Thank you. Okay, so we've got two uh, program options, select uh, and uh, elite, and dependent on uh, which one you, you go to, dependent on the amount of spend that you're putting through the business, you get a number of, uh, of different supporting uh, items. Everything from daily announcements in our monthly newsletters, um, vouchers for your staff, um, agreements, um, specialised towards your end users and also uh, assisting you in the field. Next slide, Stefan. Okay, so Select starts at 200 grand uh, revenue a year, and Elite is 500,000. Um, and what we are trying, what I'm trying to do with the team is to ensure that we have uh, joined up goals. So we're, we're all pushing for, for business uh, to grow both our businesses over the next one, two, and three years. Um, I'm pushing for quality sales training plans and, and quality budget plans with, with resellers. Um, and in turn, of course, you'll be supported by your distributor. Um, training in place for both select uh, and elite band. Um, and then if we look at the elite, we're looking at certified sales uh, expertise and technical expertise, fire training models with, with Infotrend. What I would say to you is if you're, you're contemplating getting involved in this, is we obviously do want your, your staff to be in a position where they can get to market with knowledge and around the uh, Infotrend product. So we've 
be looking at uh, to, to do this uh, certain modules going forward um, to get you interested in uh, and working with the plan. So the message from me commercially is that the business are looking to support resellers um, as well as students, um, and uh, I very much uh, ask you to get help and, and the wide implications that commercial and sales team to be able to uh, have some discussions around this offline. line. Thanks, Stefan. Excellent. Cheers, there, Kelly. Okay, so uh, that's it for today's session. Uh, we will, you know, accept some questions uh, if there are any available. There should be a, a box uh, that will allow you to type in a question. It will show up on the screen, uh, or you can, uh, I think, raise your hand as well uh, in in the presentation. We'll be able to uh, to unmute you if you'd like to do that as well. So, if anyone's got any questions, uh, please please put your hand up. Okay. So I'm not sure, don't think we're getting any uh, questions popping in. Oh, oh is that Julian? I think Julian's. I've Julian, got my hand up. There we go. Yeah, you're unmuted now. There you go. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to say, really good uh, presentation. Is there going to be one that we we can get our customers on soon, or? Uh, uh, one that's specifically around the partner program so we can try and get some drive some customers to attend that so the, uh, this this also is customer facing so we do have some resellers on here as well um, oh, apologies yes, I can't see the attendance that's right. from go to that's the meeting. Fine. Yeah, so we've got uh, we've got some resellers on here as well. So the uh, yeah, there will be some more information coming out. We'll we'll distribute, and I, I think Infotrend are going to be distributing more information shortly, especially specifically around that partner program because there's there's quite a lot to do uh, around that as well. Yeah. So absolutely. is a ter is a terrible question better than no question at all? Then. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Right, Kelly, what are you <laughs> saying? Kelly, so are we going to be releasing uh, some more information to the resellers about the partner program? Yeah. Shortly. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, we are. So, um, as I say, I would I would say to resellers who are particularly interested to either give me a call, but but yeah, we will be releasing. And as we are building up towards a, a larger release over the next four to six weeks, there'll be more more information available in the domain. So yeah, but but any questions, just give me a call. Yeah. Okay. We do we do have one question uh, that's come in saying uh, Lenovo recently uh, seemed to have cancelled their. Uh, partner program um, or yeah. cancel, uh, cancel the requirement for partners. Um, so they're asking, you know, is it, is it the right time for Infotrend to be uh, using the Elite Partner program? What was the reasoning behind the Elite Partner program? Yeah, so, uh, you know, we are looking at ways to uh, engage with the market and we, we want resellers who are hungry to sell um, Infotrend's business and Infotrend products. And, you know, from a, from a commercial uh, viewpoint, we felt it was the right way to go. We are moving into new markets um, and we want uh, uh, resellers to, to move with us into those. And, and you know, by, by launching the, uh, the partner programme, what we do is, is we engage with those who wish to work with us and, and can also see the growth of our business. Um, and, and are behind us on, on with our journey, and, and I think that defines the market um, into those who are proactive and those who are not so proactive. But, and, and we wish to support those that are proactive. Excellent. Okay. Uh, one from George as well. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll be able to answer this immediately, George. But will there be 10k SaaS drive options available for this system, uh, or is it just uh, 7,000 or flash? Um, I think we'll have to get back to you on that one, George. I, I do believe that it is um, just Flash or 7,200 at the moment, um, but I'll, I'll find out and I'll, and I'll uh, make sure we get an answer to you on that question. Um, also, I think there's going to be uh, a demo uh, as well that we'll be sending around uh, for, for the attendees to this call, um, so that there will be a, a live demo that Infotrend are going to do at some point as well, so we'll, we'll, we'll follow up on that, um, and there'll be a link to download the, the slides, uh, and I think uh, maybe even a video of this presentation as well once it's been done. So uh, we're following up for, for all the attendees that have joined. I um, can't see any more questions that have come in. Uh, oh, we've got a, a raised hand from Elliot. Um, See if I can unmute you, Elliot. 
No, I don't think so. You phoned in, Elliot. I don't think I can unmute you. Um, so if you want to follow up, Elliot, internally with, my, with myself. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, um, I think I think we'll end it there. Thank, thank you very much uh, for everyone's time today. Thank you for joining the, the uh, webinar. Um, again, we're all here for you to follow up with. So if anyone has any questions, please follow up directly. Thank you very much for your time. Great. Thanks, Stefan. Thank you. Cheers out.